Good day, as always, this channel is focused on caring for your eyes, helping you prevent and manage silent eye blinding diseases. However, today our focus is on helping you understand glaucoma, how to prevent it and for those who have it, how to better manage it so that you don't go blind. We will continue after the intro. Many cases of glaucoma, but not all occur due to a sufficiently elevated intraocular pressure, caused by impairment of the normal aqueous humor drainage. So before we discuss how to prevent and manage glaucoma, let us first understand how the drainage system of the eye maintains normal intraocular pressure. The eye contains a fluid known as aqueous humor that provides nourishment to its structures. This fluid is produced by the ciliary body and then flows between the iris and lens, through the pupil to the anterior part of the iris where is drained out through a sieve-like structure called the trabecular meshwork, at the anterior chamber angle, located at the merging of the cornea sclera with the iris periphery. The aqueous fluid now flows through in the canal of Schlem into the episcleral vein and then through the venous sinus back into this venous circulation. This natural mechanism helps to maintain normal intraocular pressure. Now we understand the natural mechanism which helps to maintain normal intraocular pressure. Let us discover how glaucoma begins. In the great majority of cases, glaucoma occurs in susceptible individuals. This form of glaucoma is called primary glaucoma. It does not occur as a result of any other eye problem. Glaucoma may also be caused by previous ocular trauma, associated systemic diseases, use of medications, a consequence of complicated eye surgeries, and others. In these situations, the disease is called secondary glaucoma. Nevertheless, in all cases, glaucoma occurs mainly due to a sufficiently high intraocular pressure leading to damage to the optic nerve. The critical intraocular pressure level in which optic nerve damage will occur varies among patients, and it depends upon many variables that will determine each patient's susceptibility to the disease. In other cases, intraocular pressure may be relatively normal, but glaucoma occurs anyway because of the inability of the eye to handle mechanical stress where the nerve fibers leave the eye or because of poor blood supply to these same nerve fibers. So, glaucoma damage may occur within the normal intraocular pressure levels, normal levels for most individuals but not for all. In this situation, glaucoma may be called normal tension glaucoma, but is the main rule, the higher the intraocular pressure, the higher the risk for glaucoma development and progression. In glaucoma, the optic nerve gets damaged. A portion of the optic nerve may be assessed during the eye exam, where it can be seen as a round structure, optic disc, with the pink or reddish section representing the neural tissue that takes the visual information to the brain. The whitish central part represents the absence of neural tissue, and it is called the cup. Some amount of cupping is normal, but excessive cupping, or an increase in the amount of cupping over time, suggests glaucoma. There are many blood vessels that emerge from the optic disc to the retina. Glaucoma causes loss of the neural reddish tissue and there is progressive cupping of the optic disc, enlargement of the whitish central part. In the visual field test, the pattern deviation plot shows the remaining problem areas after adjusting for any generalized loss that might be due to cataract or other media problems, uncorrected refractive error or small pupils. The pattern deviation plot is arguably the most important part of the field printout because it highlights areas of localized loss that are common in glaucoma. It is also advisable to conduct periodic follow-up tests in order to monitor changes in the visual VL loss while undergoing treatment. The great majority of glaucoma cases evolve silently, as patients may not notice the vision loss until it is significant and present in both eyes, or may assume that vision loss is correctable, as it is for other conditions such as cataracts. When the disease is at advanced stages, most patients will then perceive visual abnormalities. Glaucomatous damage to the optic nerve is irreversible, so what is lost cannot be recovered. The asymptomatic early stages of the disease and the irreversible nature of glaucoma make it one of the main causes of blindness worldwide. 
Glaucoma does not have a cure, however, this disease can be treated and the worsening of glaucomatous damage can be limited or even stopped. Thus, early detection associated with appropriate treatment and follow-up can preserve your vision throughout your lifetime.